Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today I'm reviewing another 124 Ferrari after a long time. I think the last one I did was the 2016 GTC4 Lusso, which I reviewed last year. This Ferrari is a bit older. These models, by the way, were all released back in 2017 when Ferrari celebrated their 70th anniversary, and Burago made a series of castings that weren't available in the usual race and play packaging but came in these hard plastic display cases, and were a bit more expensive than the usual 124 Burago MSRP. So this is part of that collection, which included unique castings in 124 like the 308 and 328, the GTC4 Lusso, FF, FXX, and this 365 GTB4 Competizione, better known as the Ferrari Daytona. The Daytona is a front-engined V12 from the late 60s and early 70s, I'd like to call the last of the classic Ferrari design, because the ones that came after this were full-on 80s-style mid-engined boxes on wheels. You know, the Testarossa, the 348, 355, but also cars like the 308 and 328 that looked boxier than this. This car is actually the predecessor of the 550 Maranello the front-engined V12 Grand Tour from the 1990s. So, I guess in the 70s and 80s, front-engine Ferraris had simply gone out of fashion or something. Now, this is the 365 GTB, with B standing for Berlinetta, the Italian way of saying hardtop. There's also a 365 GTS, which is the Spider, which was also Croquette's car in Miami Vice. Well, actually, it wasn't. They just used a body kit on a C3 Corvette, and Ferrari sued them for that. But how did this car become known as the Daytona? At the 1967 24 Hours of Daytona, Ferrari achieved a 1-2-3 finish with P4s and P3s, and when this road-going car was revealed a year later in 1968, the press dubbed it the Daytona even though Ferrari has officially always called it the 365 GTB4. But the reason I guess why Daytona has stuck with the public is firstly because it's obviously easier to pronounce than the 365 GTB-4, and perhaps secondly, because there already are so many Ferrari 365s, it's not even funny. So calling this one the Daytona removes one from that list. Taking a look at the front, I want to point out that this is not a very accurate model made by Burago, because this model is a road-going 365 GTB4 in the Competizione livery, and not a 365 GTB4 Competizione, because the track car has a different looking front. It does not have front bumpers, does not have a chrome grille, but a black mesh, and the headlight bezels are twice the size. And the reason for this inaccuracy is because Burago basically decided to sell two versions of the same casting, a road-going plain-body red version and this Competizione, which in practice, however, is just the race car's livery on the road-going casting. And if that wasn't inaccurate enough, they also got the striping wrong. On the real number 22 car, the striping is white, blue, white. But on this Burago model, it's blue, white, blue. I mean, what the hell, Burago? 
how can you even get that wrong? Props to Burago for making such a finely detailed front grille, though. Usually on 124s they use thick plastic with some chrome paint and call it a grille, but this piece looks properly proportioned. It even features a photo-etched prancing horse, which I think was an option on the real Daytona, as I've seen pics of some of them that didn't have it. And of course up here we have a smaller Ferrari logo printed onto the front. The headlights actually look pretty well done. I mean, you can see that there are no pegs and they can be seen even though they're a little bit recessed. The only thing that I don't like about them is that this black plate in front of them kind of obscures them. Could have been a bit lower. And of course on the real car, this isn't a clear texture, but instead it would have like very fine vertical lines, sort of obscuring them anyway. Again, it says 1971 on the Burago base, but I think that's inaccurate because by 1971 the Daytona had gotten a facelift in the form of pop-up headlights. This is more the 68-69 car, maybe even 1970, I'm not sure, but certainly not the 1971 Daytona. I don't know why Burago gets these facts wrong. This wouldn't have happened under Italian Burago, but remember, they're Mei Cheong Burago now. And moving up, we have here a Ferrari logo, although it seems to be a bit off-center. Not sure why it's like that. Perhaps it's also like that on the real car. Now, this being one of the newer 124 scale Buragos, the front clamshell hood does not open, unfortunately. But on the real car, it would basically open, like, in the opposite direction of a normal hood. And um, inside... You'd be able to see a 4.4 liter V12, naturally aspirated of course, with 347 horsepower, delivering a top speed of 280 kilometers per hour, and 0 to 100 kph acceleration in 5.5 seconds. You can also see that this car comes with just one mirror, and it has chrome windshield wipers. Now, Burago made sure to include the hood vents, however, they were painted in body color, so I had to basically paint them in with a black sharpie to make them look like their actual vents. And now taking a look at the mirror, you can see that Burago put a really high quality sticker for the reflector, so in 124 scale, that is really awesome. And taking a look at the side of the Ferrari Daytona, you can see that this is the classic sort of front-engined V12 look. But proportion-wise, I feel like the Burago casting is a bit squashed looking, because the Daytona really is a long car, especially the hood. But the model has a high ride height and perhaps should have been a tiny bit longer. Now on the real Daytonas, some of them had little black prancing horse logos here. Not sure if it was an option or limited to just the road-going version. Also, the indicators have the silver bit here at the front, while they are completely orange on the plain body version. And just regarding the way the indicators are colored, on some of them, the whole thing was the orange indicator, while on the other hand, some Daytonas didn't even have the orange indicator at all, and the silver bit would just extend all the way. Probably just on the Competizione track car. So like I said, this is sort of a hybrid version. Now one thing that I like about this fake Competizione livery road-going Daytona that I have here is the tires. They have the Goodyear branding, which the plain body version does not. So that's at least one nice extra detail. Now, the Daytona also came with wire wheels, which the 118 road-going versions made by KK scale have, but these classic star-shaped matte silver wheels also look good on it. But the center locks are missing the three pointy extensions that you need to hit with a hammer to unscrew the wheel, so Burago forgot to model those. Now, on the other side of the car, the fender logos are not the same. Here on the driver's side, we have a broad Ferrari logo, with stars and stripes on top, and NART written below it, which stands for North American Racing Team. 
On the passenger side, the Ferrari fender badge is thinner, but still much larger than the usual size of a Scuderia shield that is put here, and next to it we have a different logo compared to the sponsors on the driver's side. You can also see that the door lock is slightly embossed, and I don't know what the silver paint above it here is, but it isn't excess paint because it also exists on the passenger side door. Also down here it says Pininfarina on both sides. Taking a look at the back of the Ferrari 365 GTP4 Daytona, I think there should be a Ferrari branding back here on the trunk lid, but it is missing. It is also missing front and rear license plates, which is accurate to the real Competizione track car though, as it obviously didn't have any license plates on it. But since this isn't really the track car, but the road car with the track car livery, it is missing some details the track car had. Like, this part here should have been chrome. I could have painted it in silver, but I didn't since I like the striping. And other details should have also been here, like holes on the trunk lid for some downforce purposes, I think and reinforcing rods on the rear windshield, and a roll cage as well. Also, there should have been another white circle with the number 22 in it on the rear overhang here, which is weird, but it is that way on the real car. I also think the Competizione is supposed to have two more lights above these tail lights here. But looking at the tail lights, I think that Burago did a fairly solid job in 124 scale on them because, yes, they do have pegs, but they are separate pieces and they also have a texture on them and they are surrounded by a silver trim, just like on the real car. And I think they're also separately colored. As for the exhaust pipes, they are the street versions and not the competiciones because those went sideways. But the pipes themselves look good, and that's partially due to the fact that I had to paint them in black to sort of make them look good, because the entire pipe was in chrome. And now taking a look at the interior of the 124 Ferrari Daytona. It is a dark interior, so there's not really much that can be seen. However, I did add some details to it, chiefly in the form of painting the shift knob in silver and the steering wheel, which I'll show you from the other side in a second. But if you look at the center console, um, Burago did put some buttons in there, like whatever those are, um, they just didn't paint them. And then on the dash you can see you have these air vents. And we also have a handbrake, which I also tried painting in silver. Now taking a look at the seats, you can definitely tell that these are Daytona seats. I mean, of course, we're going to have Daytona seats in the Ferrari Daytona. And Burago also made sure to make the headrests look accurate to those on the real Ferrari Daytona. So they are shaped that way. It's nice. As for the door cards, uh, you can see that Burago had included the door levers, which I just painted in silver. And if we take a look at this one here, you can see it a little bit better. And down there we have speakers as well. Unfortunately, uh, vent glass was not included on this 124 scale model. But otherwise, it still looks good, I think. So taking a look at the driver's side of the Ferrari Daytona, you can see that the interior definitely looks a lot better because the steering wheel is now properly colored in. Um, I gave it a brown rim and painted the spokes in silver. Unfortunately, there's no Ferrari logo on the center of the steering wheel, but at least Burago did give us a um, sticker for the instrumentation. And if you look closely, you should be able to read all the gauges like the speedometer and the rev meter. And there's even like the fuel meter and everything. 124, keep that in mind. And down there I also painted the 
floor petals and silk. So yeah, pretty good uh, looking car, I think. And now taking a look at the bottom of the car, you can see that over here, uh, it just says Brago Ferrari 365 GTB4 Competizione 1A Siri, used under license of Ferrari SPA 124, mine is car number 11,639, made in China. And we do have a little bit of an exhaust system here, although it's not painted in silver, but it should be relatively easy to do it yourself. Tires also look fairly decent. So yeah. So what's the final verdict? If you're a Ferrari enthusiast, a Ferrari purist, you wouldn't want to touch this model with a 10-foot barge pole because of all the inaccuracies. It is not a competizione, but a road-going Daytona in a competizione livery. And it doesn't even have the accurate 22 livery in that the sequence of colors on the racing stripe is wrong, and there's another 22 logo missing that should have been behind one of the rear fenders. Not sure which one. And for a road-going Daytona, it's got the right headlights only if it is a 68, 69, or 70, but not a 1971 model, as is written on the base. Now, this is the verdict when viewed from a Ferrari purist's eyes. You know, the kind of people who either don't mind spending top dollar for the 118 Kyosho Competizione, or perhaps got it 10 years ago for a good price. But now from a 124 collector's perspective, I'm happy we got a brand new Burago casting that may not have an opening hood, but is otherwise visually a lot more appealing than the 124 Majorette casting, meaning you don't have to go after a 70 or 80 bucks sealed 118 if you want a good-looking Daytona coupe in your Ferrari collection. And if you're bothered by the Competizione inaccuracies, you can always get the plain-body version instead. As for me, I went for this livery because I thought that visually it looked nice with these extra details. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the review, and um, feel free to comment and like, and I'll catch you in the next Ferrari review. Take care, this is Imperial Diecast, signing out. <laughs>